Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kim. This is Kim's Beauty Basics. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I have an exciting video, which is one of my favorites to do. It's a head-to-head -head wear test of two different high-end foundations, and we're going to be putting them to the test, giving them a full review, I'll give you all the information that you need, and then I will be wearing them all day to see how they perform and see if these claims that they're making, because there are some crazy claims in these two foundations that we're testing today. So we will see if those are true. 2018 seems to be the year of long wear foundations. I've been patiently waiting for these two foundations to come out in Canada and they recently released in Sephora. So first we have the Marc Jacobs Shameless Youthful Look Foundation. And secondly, we have the Cover FX Power Play Foundation. Both are brand new to the market, especially in Canada, very new. If you wanna see that, just keep on watching because the video is coming right up and don't forget to hit that like button if you end up liking this video it helps me out so much getting my videos out to other people and if you end up liking this channel then don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave and hit that bell notification icon if you want to get notifications whenever I post with all that being said guys let's get right into this review and wear test So let's get into these foundations guys. I even made a page of notes so I am ready to go. First let's do the Cover FX foundation. So it's the Power Play foundation that they just released. It has 40 shades so that is great. It's supposed to be a modern matte finish. It's supposed to be a weightless full coverage foundation which starts at medium it says and is buildable to full. One thing that I'm really interested in seeing is it's supposed to be waterproof, sweat proof for all day wear and transfer proof. So we'll definitely test that out later and see how that stands up. Secondly, it's supposed to have shine control and environmental protection. For the color matching today, I picked the shade G50, and G means golden, so it has the warmer undertones. There is also a G+, Plus, which is more olive and warmer than G. In addition, there's N, which is for neutral undertone people, and P is for rosier undertone skin. For the skin type that it recommends, it says combo to oily skin types. For application for the Cover FX Power Play Foundation, it says using a brush, fingertips, or sponge so that's great so you can use whatever I like to use a beauty blender so that's probably what I'm gonna use today and then it does say to set with loose powder for optimum wear however we are not gonna set either foundation because this foundation is supposed to be waterproof and transfer resistant and setting it I won't really know if it is the foundation or if it's the powder that I put on top and then it retails for $52 Canadian and $44 American today we're testing out the Marc Jacobs shameless youthful look foundation which is their new foundation that they recently came out with this foundation has 29 shades so a little bit less than the cover fx one the main claim with the mark jacobs foundation is that it is supposed to provide 24 hour wear and no flashback in photos the Marc Jacobs foundation is oil free. It's supposed to be medium buildable coverage. One thing that's different about the Marc Jacobs foundation is it doesn't recommend using a setting powder. It says it is a self setting foundation. And then two other items that are kind of unique about the Marc Jacobs foundation is that it has snow mushroom for hydration, which they say is nature's hydrolonic Hyaluronic, hyaluronic, nature's hyaluronic acid. And then it also has blue daisy, which is supposed to diminish complexion dulling effects of pollution. For the Marc Jacobs foundation, it is a natural finish compared to the modern matte finish of the Cover FX. And the Marc Jacobs foundation is supposed to be for every skin type. It said sensitive, normal, dry, combo, oily, everything. To compare the Marc Jacobs foundation, it is $46 US and then $56 Canadian, so pretty close in price. Only a $2 US dollar difference and then a $4 Canadian difference. So I'm gonna be applying these foundations now. All right, so we are zoomed in on my skin, which is not looking so great right now. My skin is recovering from some breakouts from that time of the month and so you know it doesn't look great I'm gonna be honest another thing to note I am a college student so in no way can I afford buying these two foundations without testing them so I come in hand with my Sephora samples here so thank you to the employees at Sephora for making these up for me because without these I would never even consider buying these foundations I need to know what they can do before I buy them so we're gonna do the Marc Jacobs first this is the shameless youthful look foundation again and this is the shade medium y360 one thing I forgot to mention both foundations offer one milliliter of foundation and they're both in squeezy bottle tube things which I don't love I love pumps they're so much easier by the way I've already primed and prepped my skin I obviously did my moisturizers and then I applied my benefit professional to my nose area and then I applied my Smashbox natural radiance primer on my cheek and forehead area so I'm just gonna dot this on my face to start this looks a, li a little dark and yellow but it might match with my neck so we'll see how this goes it does feel quite like 
smooth and kind of watery. I put quite a bit on. My skin needs a lot of help right now. <laughs> so blending this out, let's see how this does. It definitely is quite, quite yellow. So just blending it down my neck a little bit. It evened out my skin tone, but I felt like it didn't really cover anything. Um, a lot of my cheek discoloration is still there under my nose, around my nose, and now my chin didn't really cover much. So I would say medium to light, but we will go in with more because I can't, I need more coverage than this for sure. Let's see how this goes. So I wouldn't say it's that buildable. It's still not covering my darker discoloration. I'm gonna spot conceal just with my finger with another bit just to see if it can cover a little bit better. All right, so I think that's as much coverage as I'm gonna get with that Marc Jacobs foundation. So my discoloration is still showing through with spot concealing and the second layer. So I think that's it. I think I'm gonna stop there. So next I have my Cover FX Power Play foundation. I'm just giving this a good shake too. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I feel like it's just a good idea just to give it a fair shot. For the Cover FX foundation, I chose the shade G50, which is golden undertones. Um, again, yellow undertones, but hopefully not this yellow. I did, again, color match this in store. It's a little bit thicker. The Marc Jacobs is a little bit more watery, liquidy. This also looks very yellow, but a little bit more beige in it to look a little bit more realistic. So again, I'm going in with my Beauty Blender using the clean side here, and let's see. This blends out really easily, and I feel like it's setting quite fast. So just looking at this foundation in the mirror, it's actually crazy. It looks really good. It looks like my skin, but better. So you see some of my discoloration shining through, but it looks a lot more natural on the skin. This looks a little bit more heavy and cakey just spot concealing down on my chin on this darker mark to see if I get more coverage. Okay guys, I just applied that foundation. Oh my, like I love this so much. I'm gonna go apply the rest of my makeup on top and I will come right back and then we'll start this wear test, guys. All right guys, I'm back with makeup applied. I've obviously applied my eye makeup, my lipstick, a bronzer. I also did my concealer and I also set under my eyes with RCMA loose color powder, which I've been doing ever since the Patrick Star video. Um, if you missed that, I will link that down below as well. But anyway, so I've set underneath my eyes, but I did not set anywhere else on my face and I did not use any setting spray to top everything off. So it is just the foundation raw. I do think the makeup on the Cover FX side does look better. I think it just looks smoother and and it just looks more blended and my just my skin looks better on that side for sure the Marc Jacobs still has some discoloration showing I also have noticed that it's gotten a little bit of creasing in around my mouth area around my nose and also it's getting a little bit patchy around here so this is the final look guys we are starting this wear test right now it is 1 p.m. so we can get a good full day in let's see how this goes approximately 10 hours later hey guys so i'm back and we are here for our final and only check-in time is 10 34 it is spring forward though so it's kind of like 11 34 so what it looks like to me it looks like both foundations look a little bit shiny through my t-zone and around my nose and i am combo skin and those are my oily spots so it's not really a big surprise However, the Marc Jacobs still looks pretty creasy and patchy right here. I think the four, it looks a little bit worse on the Marc Jacobs side as well. I think it looks a little bit more oily. The Cover FX does still look like it's holding on, especially right here. It looks really good where I didn't apply anything else. The powder under my eyes though, I used the RCMA No Color Powder, which I used in my last video where I followed a Patrick Star tutorial. And that works really well, but it looks like it didn't work really well for this foundation. Uh, or maybe it's the concealer that I used on top. I didn't use my Tarte Shape Tape, I used that Clinique one that I used, um, the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation 2-in-1 Concealer thing. I used that under the eye and maybe that's not a good match for this Power Play Foundation. I think I'm going to try it again with my Tarte Shape Tape because literally that's the only spot where I don't really like how it's wearing. Around the nose, it's a lot less shiny on the Power Play side. It is a lot more shiny on the Marc Jacobs side. I don't think the Marc Jacobs one is for me. I didn't really like it from the start and it didn't wear that great either. So that's not a winner for me, guys. So with all that being said, the Cover FX Power Play Foundation 
is my winner today and I think that, that might be my next purchase. I do like how it wears. It gives me a little bit more coverage than the Dior Forever Undercover Foundation which I tried a couple weeks ago and it still looks natural and I think this is also a good color match for me so I really do like it that way. And I did say I wanted to do a transfer test with these two foundations because the Cover FX one is supposed to be transfer resistant and waterproof and everything like that so I have a clean cotton pad right here and I think I'm just gonna touch this part down here because I know I didn't put any bronzer or anything there. So that's what we got. It got a little bit of oil, I think, but for the most part, it actually didn't really take off too much foundation. So that's pretty good. And for the Marc Jacobs side, it doesn't say it's transfer proof or anything like that. This is the Marc Jacobs one and this is the Cover FX one. And I got a little bit more off on the Marc Jacobs side here. I still haven't found any foundation that's completely transfer proof, but maybe one day. So just zooming out guys, that's pretty much it for this wear test. I realized I took off my contacts and I forgot to say anything about that. My eyes don't just magically change color, they are contact lenses. I'll put the link of the video that I reviewed these contacts down below as well. I do like the Cover FX Powerplay Foundation. I think the formula works well for my skin, which is combination, and I think it would work well for oily skin tones. I think it would even work well for normal skin types because the parts of my face that are a little bit drier, it worked well for the two. I don't think it's gonna be great for completely dry skin, but maybe you could test it out you never know it wore very well and I know it is a high-end foundation but if it's a high-end foundation I want it to be something that I can't get at the drugstore and for me this natural finish that lasts is something that I haven't really found at the drugstore quite yet my Maybelline Superstay has a very nice finish but it doesn't look natural and then my Milani foundation looks great but it also doesn't look as natural so that's pretty much it guys I hope you enjoyed the wear test if you have any questions just uh, put them in the comment section down below and I will definitely be happy to answer them. I will keep testing out this Cover FX foundation for the rest of the week and see if it breaks me out or if it works a little bit better with different concealers and different products. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are in the world and I hope I see you very, very soon in my next video. Bye guys.